For your love, I fight to come through. For your love, I fight to come through. You give me complete protection. Yeah, yeah. Close up, give me complete protection. Anytime you smile for me, I go go. Back and forth like a yo yo. Your love to you, the me no go. So fresh like it's no go. When you smile for me, I go go. <laughs> See, I was already getting lost in the song. You guys, that was a jam. That was a jam from Brian and Chomzi. Or would I say it was from Brian because he was the main person that composed the song for their task today. And it was, it was awesome. <laughs> it was awesome. I'm listening to it. So let's talk. Let's just, let us begin with the conversation that Doing had with Shex that had to do with the reason he went off on Fina the way he did because their wager task and every other thing that came, that came after that um was kind of affected by the issue that Shex and Fina had right so let's just start with that let's address the issue then we now um go on to other things the breakfast that was served tonight and then every other thing so welcome back to my channel guys if you are new here please do subscribe turn on your post notifications so that you can get notified each time i post a brand new video and don't forget to give it a thumbs up so Shex and Fina had a fight yesterday morning and I believe that a lot of people have actually watched the fight or they already kind of know what caused the fight and how the fight went down. But for people that don't know, I'm just going to try and summarize what happened between them. They were trying to do their wager task, they were trying to get um, their ideas together and all of that. And for some reason, um, Fina's suggestion was not really being taken. And because of the things were not going her way, she just kind of changed her mood, said some things that were not meant to be said. What she said was in the line of, um, my level two people know me, I get bad character, right? And it did not sit well with Shex. So Shex went up on her. I was talking about if they are both up for possible eviction, I mean, if they are both up, it's, it's possible eviction if they are both up that she's going to go home and that's when Fina now got as in <laughs> immediately got to Fina she was like oh is this your house is this is as in as per big brother way be there is this your house what did I say what did I put it to you I just said my being that okay I'm angry right now you they attack me how is that concern you the next time that we go is a brother they are not big brother and in their situation I feel like um, Fina had her own wrongs obviously like not because something is not going your way then you just decide that you're, you're going to work out you don't just do that but um the statement Shex made or where Shex was coming from was a whole different level altogether he just brought in what was not even in the conversation so um last night i mean at this night i mean at this morning it's already morning so he was having a conversation with doing right and doing was just trying to make him see where he was wrong right and he was just saying that oh for him he was kind of trying to prove a point that everybody, anybody can win in the house, everybody's equal and all of that. And um, Doyin was like, but she didn't say any of that. Like she didn't refer to um, that. She didn't even talk about that. And it's like, oh, but she gives alpha vibes. That alpha thing of nobody is better than anyone. Nobody thinks she's going to win. Anybody can win. I don't think. She, she never said that. No, she didn't say that. But she does give alpha vibes. Uh, alpha vibes might just be who she is. Excuse me, sir. What is wrong with giving alpha vibes or alpha female vibes? Like, what exactly is wrong with that? I don't understand how that is supposed to be an issue. And this statement he made is the exact reason why he went up on her. It was not even about, like, what was going on there. Shag's attack on Fina was definitely personal. It did not stem from today because the conversation he had with Biggie, like, during their diary room session, he said a whole lot of things that I was just like, ah, how? Like... How did this come into the equation? How did this come into the equation? So he was talking about the fact that he's a, he's a very confident person. There are so many people who mistake his confidence for arrogance. And that the reason he's talking to Big Brother about the situation is that he doesn't want um, he doesn't want his arrogance to be mistaken for... I mean, he told Big Brother that he doesn't want Big Brother to mistake his arrogance. I mean, his confidence to be mistaken for arrogance. And that he prays that people like him this way. As in... If you see the things that were just things that were very very unrelated i don't want my confidence to be taken for arrogance that's actually why i'm speaking about this to you big brother i don't want you to take my confidence for arrogant arrogance i'm confident i'm not arrogant i'm confident i'm not cocky so because i'm confident that means that i'm willing to go head to head with any housemate because i trust myself and i pray that a lot of people love me so i just feel like the way she was speaking she's speaking from a place of feeling like she's the top dog there's no top dog I'm glad that Big Brother questioned him. Big Brother was like, you say that people mistake your arrogance, your confidence for arrogance, but you're here. That's literally what you're doing with this with this person. And then he's like, it doesn't feel like with Fina's situation, it is confidence that 
when you when you make people feel like you're better than them he was just um, trying to paint a picture of paint, paint a picture that okay maybe that's how fina that's how fina behaves and that's what fina is doing you said it's easy to mistake your confidence for arrogance and yet you accused her of being too confident i don't believe that what Fina is doing is confidence. I really think that everybody is the same. And then he also made a statement about like, oh, he has been taking this for so long. And I'm like, excuse me, sir. You guys, like as, at the time of um, oh, at the time of this fight, you guys have, have not even been together for, for up to 40 hours. And then how long is 40 hours that you're saying you've been taking this for so long? Within these 40, 40 hours, I'll be within these 48 hours, within these two days you guys have stayed together. She has cooked for you guys at least two times or three times safe. So when is this so long that you're talking about um, her behaving like that? Like I said, it was definitely personal. You guys remember in, in the arena one time where he said that um, this Fina's whole thing, I mean, this, this her whole day or her attitude is a strategy, right? So for me, I feel like he feels like this her strategy is kind of working, you know? And then he wants to paint it to be something else. He wants to paint it as arrogant so that um we start viewing it as arrogance that kind of thing that's what i was able to sense and then definitely him mentioning alpha female vibes alpha um alpha vibes it means that he's intimidated like yeah what do you guys think about this whole situation just just let me know your thoughts on this so this their issue that he had in the morning now affected their wager task right the first part of the task was for them to um couple up <laughs> couple up tasks that um the two people that are quarreling had to pick each other it was a very very funny um situation the other funny coupling was for the one that's groovy and the one for groovy so each girl had to pick who they were couple up with and it was not you will not see the person's name before you pick so when you pick you now know who you coupled up with but there are more girls than guys so there was a guy that had two ladies and guess who the guy was groovy <laughs> So for the task here, yeah, they were to um, create pickup lines for the guys, just like sweet sweet things, tell them sweet sweet things. So for Fina, it was very very awkward. Like the whole situation was awkward. The least that they're reading, I just knew that um, it's probably Shex that she's reading this thing for because um, some of them did not mention who they picked. They, they did not know the people that the guys didn't know the ladies that picked them. So it's when you come out to read your speech that you now talk, you now say who you picked. The way you look at me, it's so. <laughs> hmm. Oh, you're such a fine guy. Just know that you close my heart from the outside world and from the outside guys. Shags. For Groovy, the two ladies that picked him were reading out the city things. When they were done, they went to sit, sit down with him and then Big Brother now threw shades. Big Brother said that. It's something about um, you're now in the middle of two ladies again. We we'll never trade our love for you for anything else. And once again, Groovy is in the middle of two women. <gasps> we brother, we brother, you're on the road today. So the second part of the task was a Pictionary um, knockout game, right? So where they will draw something and then the teammates will have to try and guess what he's trying to draw. So for that one, he, um, it was t um, the team that won had Elio Swax doing um, Shags and Fina, right? That's the second part of the task. The third part had to do with them taking pictures. So um, Biwa told them that they should go in and dress up and they should also practice for a song presentation. Like they gave them a beat that they should practice a song as a co as in as couples. This is the part that now caused problems. So Shags went to the kitchen to they were playing love literally. Big brother gave them one hour, one hour to do um the song, to prepare the song, dress up, everything, like then prepare for the picture um session. That's how they went in, Bella went in to cook. Um, Sheikh was there playing love behind everything. So the, the whole thing now sabotaged their, the, the task for their partners. Then for Sheikh, um, Fina approached him twice and he was like, um, it's better for them to practice on their own. That he should have his own verse, he should um, get his own verse while, while she gets her own. So they did not work together. When they went into the arena, Big Brother now started, started it by calling them out. Your habit of sabotaging your partners when both of you are not paired together will no longer be tolerated. Then, you know, he told um, um, Shex to apologize. He told Bella to apologize, which they did. Then later on, Fina's mood, Fina's mood was just down, right? So at some point, she now started crying. And just subtle, subtle, 
tears and all they now went in to take the pictures with their you know nice nice outfits it was very awkward it was very very awkward for shags and fina like the actor drama today to be very honest aside from the fact that the whole thing is annoying the other side of it is that it was actually very funny to see everything like i was looking forward to see every part of the presentation because of the drama that was going on right but they actually did good um their song presentation wasn't as bad as i thought it was going to be i was thinking it was going to be a disaster because you complete me okay okay baby wanna come closer okay okay baby wanna come closer so many other um housemates like most of them their songs were good actually like they they did well apart from the ones that were good the other the other ones were just funny like I would say that it was a comedy scene. <laughs> some of the songs were just off key. Some sounded like nursery rhymes. Some sounded like I don't even know, but it was just a funny task, and I, I kind of enjoyed this show. So at the end of the day, for the singing competition, Brian and Chomzi won. People that said the winnings or the result of the winnings, the money or the amounts or whatever they won will be announced later. And I think it's going to be on their website. So that's it for their task presentation. So for things that happened inside the house um, last night, we had Dotson and Daniela. They were having a conversation about this this thing that was as if he was trying to grow. And then um, Dotson was just telling Daniela, I think Daniela was asking him to give her space. So he was telling her that he's going to respect her wish and give her space. And then Daniela was now saying that um, she just feels like um, whatever she had with carried is what her waiting to see where it's going to lead them outside. And I feel like whatever it was that we had with her, it's actually worth me trying to see if we should work out. Happy. Just dice it for me. I'll give you your space here. Yeah? I honestly feel it's just disrespectful for me to do that. Thank you, Daniela Spice is with thank you. She also spoke about liking him earlier on, right, in the game. I think she said that they've spoken before. Maybe it was after one of their parties. So she liked him then, but she had to just, like, dead the whole thing um, since this, this, they decided to be friends. So, but I'm hoping that the situation doesn't switch. Like, he was saying something about, like, it's sad and everything. So I hope that Pity Party doesn't come into the equation and it's, just, it's not be like, oh, facts. I don't know, but um, I'm just hoping that she just stays on her own or stays by herself. Then apparently Bella was crying in the toilet. Um, she just went to console her. I think she was crying. He said she was crying based on stress and everything. Uh, for me, I feel like she was crying based on maybe the warning that people like, gave her. Maybe she just went to think about it and all. Then she went to talk to Chomzi that um, Chomzi should try and reconcile with Bella so that maybe she'll have somebody else to talk to apart from himself. I just want you guys to make up because as her man, there's a lot of love I can give her, but she also needs her girls. Does that make sense? Like that's how women are. Do you know what I'm saying? She's not crying because of you, but I just know that she's stressed in general. So many of them got emotional yesterday actually. Diana also cried. Like, I think they, they need to just come together and do therapy session. <laughs> With themselves moving on groovy told shags i wanted to have a conversation with him so they had a conversation like i think like um, around like three hours ago right so groovy was just telling shags that the way he went about the whole situation wasn't cool that shags was not his friend that he should have he would have gone off on him right i just feel like the way you went about it was like yeah. it was it was really unnecessary and it was mm -hmm. really rude and obviously like if you were my guy mm -hmm. even though i'm even though naturally like i'm i don't lean towards I don't need to watch provocations and shit. Like, if you were my guy, I would have probably, like, changed it for you, Julia. Mm -hmm. also was trying to explain. They talked for the longest time. I thank God that Kyle really took us away from there because the talk was... I knew that the talk was go definitely going to be long. Then, Deji was complaining about Chi-Chi being tired of the whole thing. That he doesn't know how he entered the ship and no ship. He was just complaining to Dotsu. And I was just saying that, guy, you need to... Um, tell Chichi, like let her know. I know that he has his body language has been very obvious, but I feel like he should still let her know. Like just let her know that this thing is not it's not working. Then um, Rachel and Diana they're also having a conversation trying to sort their issues. You guys know that there was a very heated something between them on Saturday. So I guess everybody was just doing like um everybody was just trying to sort their issues. So yeah, I think that's those are the main things that happened that was yesterday. So I'm going to end this video here. Thanks for watching and don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And I'm going to see you on the next one. Bye. I love you.